listening to Cosmic Cousins Soul Centered Astrology. I am your host, Jeff Henshaw. Thanks for tuning in. Cosmic Cousins is dedicated to honoring the interconnectedness of our universal family through embodied health, self discovery, and deeper learning. And it is here to bring you back into alignment with the cosmos. So thank you for being here as always. Hey, Cosmic Cousins, welcome back to another week of the podcast. This is our special Aries Full Moon podcast episode, and we are right here at the beginning of Libra season of 2023, so happy Libra season to you. Happy birthday to all of the gorgeous Libras out there. We're going to get into some of the Libra Equinox invitations for you on this podcast episode. We're going to check in with the Aries full moon. We have two guests with us on the podcast who are each an Aries moon. We have Christina of Terra del Norte and Vanessa of the Aquarian podcast. We're going to talk about life as an Aries moon with both of these individuals. And so we'll get into those conversations later on in a bit. But before we do that, I want to check in about the current transits, about this Aries full moon, about Libra season, the North Node of Fate is in Aries now, and I also have a few announcements for you as well. So, welcome, Jeff Henshaw here, astrologer, tarot reader, I'm offering this through the lens of spirituality and social justice, these are my passions, and so... It's an honor to be here with you. At this time, on behalf of Cosmic Cousins, I am hosting a fundraiser for Aloha Maui Pride in response to the recent fires that have affected the beautiful island of Maui. Aloha Maui Pride is an organization aiming to raise funds and awareness for the LGBTQIA2 spirit community that was displaced and affected by the devastating fires in Maui. So as of now, we have reached 80% of our fundraising goal of $1,111. If you'd like to donate on behalf of Cosmic Cousins to Aloha Maui Pride, you could visit my Instagram. And if you have any questions, you could please reach out to me. You could send me an email. There's links in the show notes to all of this. Um, Let's make a difference. Together we can lend our support. We can create a brighter future for our LGBTQ community. And your presence and your contribution will make a significant impact. Um, I did have people donate on the Instagram already. Again, we've reached 80% of our goal, which is amazing. We've had over 20 people donate. And I said that I would shout you out on the podcast if you donated. And so a special thank you to those that donated to Aloha Maui Pride, including Molly Magrick. Ewan Duarte, Mason Funk, Inatizzi Tiz, Lindsay Mack of Wild Soul Healing, Jason Hallman, Ryan Porter, Marissa C, Laura, Caitlin F, Maria S, Heidi Rose Robbins, Mermaid Wolf, Sacred Tide, Last Name Wills, Anne Heidman, David Davenport, Adriana Marie Rizzolo, Trevor Jack, Mady Santos, Bruna Maya, Lindsay Meredith, and last and certainly not least, Leticia Kagan, who is a Libra with an Aries moon. So happy Cosmic Self Day, Leticia, to you. And again, thank you for all those who uh, sent in these donations. Together, we can make a difference. So, happy Libra season to you. Happy Libra equinox. If you're on the northern hemisphere, this is the marker of the autumn equinox. If you're on the southern hemisphere, this is the marker of the spring equinox. And this is a really special time of year. 
day and night are in equal measure. And so this holds profound spiritual symbolism for us. It offers us invitations for personal and collective growth. And so I think one of the most obvious is balance and harmony. The Libra equinox, it is this time that invites us to seek equilibrium in our lives as the world around us is also doing the same thing. And so I'd encourage you this time of year to start thinking about finding a healthy balance between work and rest, activity and stillness, to inner and outer focus. And we can begin to do that now by bringing loving awareness to our bodies and our breaths as we begin to transition into connecting into Libra energy a little bit more. Each astrological sign is connected to a different part of the body, and Libra is connected to the lower back, to the kidneys, to the adrenal glands. So maybe you place the hands on your lower back and begin to breathe here. You know, Libra is the halfway point and the zodiacal wheel, and so it connects us to the parts of the body that are halfway on the body. We started out talking about Libra and its connection to balance and harmony and how the Libra equinox marks a time when day and night are of equal length. This is also a time where we are going through some sort of transition. We're transitioning from one season to another, from summer to autumn on the northern hemisphere. It's, signal it's signaling change to our bodies. It's signaling change to our mind and to our spirit. So we're in a time of change, which leads us to transformation. And so the Libra equinox, as we breathe into the lower back, it invites us to self-soothe, to reflect. This is a time where we're going more into introspection and self-reflection as we are tipping the scales into the darker half of the wheel if we're on the Northern Hemisphere. So we're being encouraged to pause. Even just taking a breath into the body, Libra's connected to the air. It's the air element, and it's ruled by Venus, which is very much connected to the body and to nature. And so having reflection and introspection with the body and when in nature is encouraged by this energy. We're encouraged to pause, to take stock of our journey, to take a more objective perspective, which Libra also does. And we can even begin to start to set intentions for the future. So some of this, I talked about change and transformation, which is associated with Scorpio, talking about setting intentions for the future, which is connected to Sagittarius. So this Libra energy is initiating us into this quarter of the wheel, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius. And so we're being invited to go within ourselves, to explore our inner landscapes, and also to gain clarity on our values. Libra is also a very social energy. I'm sure you know as an air sign, Libra encourages us to cultivate a sense of unity with others, compassion, empathy. The equinox does remind us that we are part of something greater than ourselves and invites us to foster connection and community, to reach out to loved ones. You don't have to do it alone, although this Aries full moon may illuminate how we feel alone or feel like strong individuals at this time. So this full moon is going to be a balancing act to this Libra season. I also think of the Libra equinox. It is a time to express gratitude for the abundance in your life, to express gratitude for the blessings of this time of year to appreciate the gifts of nature, to appreciate the gifts of loved ones and the opportunities that we've been giving over this last year for new growth. Even as hard and as challenging as it has been, I know that each and every single one of us have been on some sort of individual journey of growth. Chiron is in Aries right now, which we're going to get into today. And Libra is inviting us to reflect on that, to appreciate it 
And so the Libra Equinox, it does encourage us, encourage us to renew our commitments to ourselves and also to our relationships. So again, Libra season blessings to you all. Again, happy birthday to all of you gorgeous Libras out there. Thank you as always for being here. As we continue to breathe into the lower back, let's also bring our awareness to Aries part of the body, which is the head and the brain and the face. Maybe you place one hand on the head, one hand on the lower back if you're able, as we transition into connecting to the Aries full moon. So yes, the Aries full moon is upon us. I am, I embark, I start anew. I will always offer you three phrases for the new and the full moon. If you're new here, we gather on the new and the full moon. And I'll always offer you three phrases. These three phrases are, they could be tarot prompts, they could spark deeper conversation. They could be used as journal prompts. You could fill in the blank. You could also use them as a way to inspire your artwork. If you do pull tarot cards for them and you tag me, I'll reshare it. And also, I just love seeing what you all are up to. So I am, I embark, I start anew. Aries, we know it's symbolized by the ram Aries steps forth with its horns. We're connecting to the head and the brain. When I think of the horns, they're often seen as a spiral, which is a symbol of emerging consciousness, of evolution. Uh, There's tremendous opportunities for creative breakthrough when we're working with Aries. And so, again, this Aries full moon is the, the polar sign to Libra. And we're only gifted with one Aries full moon every year. And so as the fire sign that's ruled by Mars, Aries encourages the declaration of our own individuality. So we are each being called to connect to the most mature expression of Aries at this time, which is the one who takes grounded action in the name of growth and love and truth. You could use the emperor and the tarot to meditate on this soul potential for Aries. You could think of Queen of Aries, Maya Angelou, who was named Queen of Aries by the Cosmic Cousins listeners in 2019. You could also think of the official emoji for Aries. The Cosmic Cousins Aries emoji is the sunrise over the canyon emoji. So Aries is connected to the sunrise. Libra is connected to the sunset. The esoteric phrase for Aries is, I come forth and from the plane of mind, I rule. What is particular to this Aries full moon is that this is the first Aries full moon since the north node of fate entered Aries back in July of 2023. So we've really only had this north node of fate in Aries for two months. So you could think back over the last two months, how have you initiated some sort of new journey, new beginning as an individual? If it doesn't feel like it's taken place, we have time. The Aries north node of fate is from July 17th, 2023 until January 11th of 2025. And so newfound awarenesses around what the North Node of Fate and Aries themes might be for you will be illuminated on this full moon. There's the potential for that since this is the first Aries full moon with the North Node of Fate and Aries. So the North Node of Fate's journey through Aries is encouraging us each toward a destined path of personal growth. Aries is a sign of tremendous consciousness. So being conscious of your spiritual journey is important while the North Node of Fate is in Aries. Aries is a sign of initiation. So we are all moving through some sort of initiation over the next year and a half. And we're being called to step forward with greater confidence, 
during this year and a half long-term transit. There could be an urge for you to take courageous leaps. Aries isn't necessarily the most logical sign. That's actually Libra, its polar sign. Aries is much more instinctual. So trusting your instincts. You may feel greater support from the universe at this time to make bold decisions, which others might perceive as reckless. You might feel like you have no choice but to set foot on this new journey of evolution. And so Aries does like to burn through things. We could be burning through things that no longer support us. This shift ignites a passionate call towards new beginnings. Your soul is longing to be set free. Your soul is longing to be encouraged towards the cultivation of expressing yourself in new ways. There's something particular to this North Node of Fate in Aries, though, is that Chiron's co-presence in Aries is shifting it slightly. Chiron is a planetoid often referred to as the wounded healer. And so throughout this year and a half transit, it also brings fateful realignments around opportunities for profound healing. Chiron in Aries is encouraging each of us to confront our own deeper wounds as individuals, particularly as it relates to abandonment. So whatever traumas you've endured, you are being invited to tend to them. You know, Chiron and Aries is a very solo individual journey of healing. And so each of us are on some sort of solo journey at this time. It's encouraging us to tend to our solitude with confidence to transform our pain around our individuality into sources of wisdom and strength. Chiron is connected to teachers, to mentors, to therapists. So you might find that this is a time where you are seeking greater support from mentors or teachers, or perhaps you are stepping into your role as mentor and teacher. And I think it goes hand in hand with each other. So some questions for reflection for us is, how might you embrace the vulnerable aspects of yourself at this time? How might you embrace the vulnerable aspects of yourself? In what ways might you cultivate greater resilience in the face of solitude? In what ways might you cultivate greater resilience in the face of solitude? And how might you empower others through your own healing journey? How might you empower others through your own healing journey? These are Chiron and Aries themes, these questions, but also that is further emphasized by this North Node of Fate being in Aries. And so for those of you who have the North Node of Fate and Aries in your own birth chart, welcome to your nodal return. I'm right there with you. I also have the North Node of Fate in Aries. This occurs only once every 18 and a half years. So the nodal return holds profound significance for an individual. These are the ages that the nodal return roughly takes place. It's age 18 and a half, age 37, 55 and a half, age 74, and 92 and a half. And during a nodal return, life events may sync up in fateful ways to encourage exponential soul growth. The same is true if you have any placements in Aries they are also being encouraged by exponential soul growth at this time. So if you have the sun in Aries, for instance, your very sense of self, the light that you shine forth to the world, is going through some sort of evolution at this time. If you have the moon in Aries, you might feel it on a deeper level. This could be connected to you shifting and changing your relationship to home and the ways that you relate to your inner core being of who you are. If you have Aries rising, you're going through some sort of major shift in your potential for evolution and growth and expansion. And whatever other planets you have in Aries, the North Node of Fate will be transiting that in your chart over this time period. So as we approach eclipse season, which by the way, this full moon is opening up the portal to eclipse season, open yourself up to powerful insights over the next few weeks. The Libra New Moon solar eclipse is on October 14th, and the South Node of Fate is in Libra, which we will explore 
on the next episode what the south node of fate and Libra's invitation is for us. And so this Aries full moon, it does offer perspective on the Aries Libra themes that are beginning to unfold in your life. So let's breathe into the head and the brain and the face to honor Aries and to honor that we are all, we are all on some sort of journey of individual growth and individual healing at this time. And so be extra sweet with yourself and other people around you. Gift yourself time and space to be on your own. If it's a no, it's a no. If it's a yes, it's a yes. Trust in your instincts. Again, I am, I embark, I start anew. At this time, let's connect in with Christina of Tarot della Note. Christina, I'm excited for you to meet, is a very special person in my life. We've been working together over the last year. Christina just completed level two of a one-on-one -on -one mentorship with me. And she is a gifted empath and intuitive tarot reader that is a descendant from an ancestral line of feminine mystics and healers. She also has incredible astrology vocabulary as well. And so her sessions, they're heart-led, they're nourishing, they provide a safe space for people to share the deeper inner workings of their life. And so Christina is going to offer us a beautiful reflection on her own experience of being an Aries moon while also sprinkling in some tarot magic in there. So at this time, let's listen to this message from Christina, who is a Pisces sun with an Aries moon and a Leo rising. So right now I'm in Taos, New Mexico. I'm staring at these beautiful mountains in front of me. And I am actually on a strange life journey that led me to a place that makes no sense at all, really. If I close my eyes, I can still know where I'm going. And when we think of Aries energy, what we're talking about is instinct. First steps, like fearless pioneering. Aries are the alchemists of the unfamiliar. They journey through parts unknown so that the rest of the signs, from Taurus to Pisces, can build and then ascend, only to start it all over again around the wheel each time. I have a moon in Aries. For many years, I thought my moon was my downfall. My moon in Aries was the part of me that held all my impulsive mistakes. Hot-tempered, individualistic, competitive, all the unelevated characteristics that give this moon a reputation of being a tour de force. But as I grew physically and spiritually, I came to a new understanding of the moon in Aries. Without the energy of this moon, for me and for the collective, we can remain stuck. Aries as a cardinal sign brings that primary energy we need to shift things around in our life. A full moon in Aries gives us a catalyst moment to say, I don't know if what I'm doing makes any sense at all, but I'm going to show up regardless to see what happens. And we can take steps forward not knowing if we're going to be okay in the end. Instinct, primal instinct is at play here. My Aries moon taught me to allow my instincts to lead even in strange life situations that made no sense at all. Decisive action that has pushed me forward even when I wasn't ready to be. Like in Two of Wands, which represents Mars, Aries planet, and Aries sign, our Two of Wands traveler stands on ground that's fixed and comfortable and secured. Their eyes are intent on where they're going. A globe in their right hand and a wand in their left, they face what they don't yet know. And yet they remain fearless in all that possibility. Two of Wands is like a middle-aged journey. It signifies a journey that in some way began when you were born, almost like you've been packing and preparing for it until now. And when the time comes that you're ready to take the step out, it's a journey that moves forward later in life. Because it's a journey that can only move forward once you've amassed a certain amount of life experience. The King of Wands looks in the same direction. And he holds the same wand, that same sturdy wand that sprouts the same seedling buns of initiation. And I could see them next to each other. In an energy exchange that is so powerful, it gives tangibility to vision. So, when we arrive at the full moon in Aries at 6 degrees, 
this September 29th, and if you're open to this energy, you might feel that Aries pull, the impetus to be alone, to forage, to groundbreak in ways that you or your crew find unexpected. This full moon in Aries will allow you for a very short window to be an alchemist of the unfamiliar, transforming an unknown experience into what could one day become a lasting memory. Thank you, Christina, for sharing your reflection and your truth and your wisdom with us. If you'd like to check out Christina's offerings, Terra Della Note, there's a link in the show notes for that. And if you're also feeling called towards a reading at this time, I do have some openings for both astrology and tarot readings this fall. Uh, Libra season, Scorpio season, Sagittarius season. These are great times to be checking in for a reading, and it would be an honor to get to connect with you in this way. In addition, if you'd like to support the podcast, you could become a Patreon supporter at patreon.com slash cosmic cousins. And special thank you, shout out to all of those who are Patreon supporters already. At this time, we're ready to transition into our next special guest, which is Vanessa of the Aquarian Podcast. I believe Vanessa, I think, maybe has been on the podcast before. I know I've been on Vanessa's podcast as well. And a little bit about Vanessa. They are a Libra sun, also an Aries moon with a Leo rising. Vanessa is a professional psychic medium and card reader with over 15 years of experience. The Aquarian is her pseudonym. It helps her drop into her psychic senses and connect with the unseen. Uh, The Aquarian represents the coming age and our right to authenticity and clarity. And during our conversation, we explore many Aries Libra themes. We talk about air signs and angels, the psychic ability of air signs, Libra and its connection to water and emotional receptivity. We also get into the invitations of the Aries full moon. And so at this time, let's transition into this conversation with Vanessa now. Here this Hello. on the podcast today, we have Vanessa, who is, I think of you as a dear friend of mine, even though we've, I don't think we've hung out in person. That's so true. I actually think of you as a dear friend too. So whenever I reach out to you, I'm like, oh my God, can't wait to have a little conversation with Jeff. <laughs> I mean, it could be a little bit of the synergy in our charts. We've got just this kind of Leo Aquarius polarity going on and air signs, fire signs happening. So could you share with us your big three and maybe yeah. something besides your big three that you love about your chart? Oh, um, three things came to mind. Well, actually one main <laughs> thing came to mind, so I'll leave it to that one. The other ones are like a struggle, but I've come to love them. Um, so my big three are, I'm a Leo rising, a Libra sun and an Aries moon. Mm-hmm. Very topical right now. Mm-hmm. And I would say my favorite thing about my chart is that my Jupiter in Aquarius directly trines my sun within 12 minutes. So yeah. So when Pluto comes for my sun and Jupiter, it's the same day that they're Mm -hmm. both affected. So that's how close it is. And it's, I remember growing up, my dad would always say, you know, you're you always feel blessed, always have gratitude. Um, he's always felt like a, a benevolent force was always on his side. And I think I probably picked up a lot of that feeling and things have, you know, even if they've gotten hard, they've turned in my favor a lot of times. And I really thank Jupiter for that because it, it doesn't, you know, over expand me to the point where I like my ego is like way out of control, like where Jupiter can do. I heard you say something about your dad and then my mind went, wait, is your dad an astrologer? 
No. Wait, <laughs> could you clarify a little bit? Yeah. I mean, I look at the sun as my dad when I was growing up, my natal chart, right? Oh, so sure. yeah. So since it trines it so closely, I I think about that when I was younger about, he would say that all the time, you know, that he felt like benevolent forces were on his side and, you know, no matter how bad things would get, things would turn in his favor and they would. And I think that kind of echoes that in my life where I feel like protected in a way that Jupiter sort of angelic experience where something's kind of like, you know, protecting me on my shoulder. Do you ever connect angels to the air signs? I do. I do actually. I do. Yeah. So being an air signs, does that even make it even more angelic when you're using that word? I'm just thinking Libra sun and Jupiter and Aquarius like might feel different if it was like Taurus sun, Jupiter and Capricorn or something, you know? Yeah, I do. I, well, you know, you think of the wings, right. Or airborne, Right. Mm-hmm. And, and also the ability to communicate. And I'm a psychic um, on top of many other things. And one of the most one of the best experience I've, I've had of channeling something is an angel. And they do have a real form of communication that requires somebody who can translate. And that's what the air signs can do, especially Libras. We can translate or harmonize different languages together in order to, you know, say say or experience or, or move through whatever it's what's going on. Yeah. I think that's why one of my favorite emojis in the Libra emoji is the dove because Mm. it encapsulates the peace. It's like the dove of peace, but also the messenger angelic quality of Libra and it's connected to nature and beauty and like all the things. So I think the scales like really feel Libra and of course, like visually, but like that dove, there's just something in it that I'm loving reflecting on this Libra season and when we're talking about angels, when we're talking about clairvoyant, is it clairvoyance? Is that your psychic clair? What What's your clair? I can I have I can do most of the clairs. I've, I've experienced all of the clairs, um, even clair scent. There's a lot of clairs. There's at least five clairs, and then some people say that there's more clairs than that. But it goes. It's like the inner experience of each physical sense. Mm-hmm. And so if you want to say clairvoyance is like um, the inner gift of sight mm-hmm. and clairsentience is the inner gift of touch because you know you can sense, you can sense things all over your body. Empathy is when you can feel emotion and clairsentience, you can, you know, you can um, get emotion out of what you're sensing, you know, or the sensations that you're getting, but it's even more than that. Like I'll pick up on pain in somebody's body or I'll pick up on, you know, illness or things like that. And then you've got um, clairaudience where you can hear I don't know if you, sometimes I've noticed when I'm falling asleep, I'll hear voices. And I don't know if you ever have that experience where you're like half asleep, half awake. But I think that's probably where most people like experience clear audience. Yeah. And then there's clear cognizance, knowing you probably experience clear cognizance, like a sense of knowing something, even if it's not present or even if the outcome or the, the steps aren't even present in front of you. <laughs> that feels the strongest, I think, as an Aquarius is just mm-hmm. the Um, but I've experienced the other ones and Mm. something's coming to me in this moment where if there's five clairs and maybe there's more clairs, but it makes me think of the five senses, Mm -hmm. but then taking it into the psychic realm. And I'm thinking of Libra being ruled by Venus, which is very much connected to the five senses. But when we're talking about an air sign that's ruled by Venus, maybe it does take us a bit into the psychic realm. And I think all signs have potential for psychic energy, but I am curious about observing Libra since you're a Libra sun through the lens of the Claire's and also just psychic abilities. I don't think it's something that we always talk about with Libra or with the air signs, but I do think the air signs are hella psychic. I really do. I really appreciate that you're bringing this up because this has been something on my mind since I could understand astrology because I didn't know why I was experiencing what I was experiencing. I didn't know how to control it. I didn't know how to develop it, but I was just very drawn to it. And then when I looked at my chart, the only water sign that I have in the, um, the main, uh, planets, not the modern planets, but it is Saturn and Scorpio. So it's like, everything is just completely bottled up inside of me. So I didn't, I, I didn't really know how to develop a lot because I have a lot more boundaries than a lot of psychics have. And that's where, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's mm-hmm. where I think people don't really, and I've had to really learn this both in my own experience and through reading and through talking to other people. So I, this is not direct transmission. And I actually think it's better this way because it's like my own experience. But when you are able to open to psychic information, a lot of times it's through relationships and through um, emotional connection. It's not all of the time through, say, telepathy or mm. um, through, you know, you don't know that it, telepathy is happening. A lot of times if you ha- if telepathy is going on, you don't know what somebody else's thoughts yeah. going on in your head. So that's why I think it's attributed a lot of time to water signs because there is no separation a lot of times with water signs between the people that they're in relationship with mm-hmm. and they're more in touch with their feelings. Yeah. Where as a Libra and not having much water in me, I'm very in touch with people's um, psyche and the way that they think. And right. And it's like, that's what I'm, I'm most interested in, especially having a nadir Scorpio, you know, I come from a, and my South node is Scorpio. Uh, So it's so much, yeah, there's so much, um, you know, wanting to go really deep already in me, but it's not, deep in the sense of having a bonded relationship with you. It's that same, like that air feeling of wanting to stay a certain distance from you, wanting to fly a certain distance from you, but the bird's eye view looking down, how a hawk can see a mouse running, you know, hundreds of feet away from it while it's Mm -hmm. flying in the sky. It's kind of like that. So there's a distance to it, but it's just as piercing, I think, as maybe the other signs would have. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's where the psychic quality of air comes in, that it's less an emotional psychic capacity, but more connected to the thought waves in the same way as like when you're scrolling through Instagram, you can start to pick up on what the group mind is thinking. Yes. Because you see what everyone's having a conversation about. Even the Zodiac emoji project is that kind of air element of just getting to know from each other, what we think collectively about archetypes but maybe we're not going into the emotional realms. But those who have water in their chart, and you do have the South Node in Scorpio hanging out That's with right. Them, <laughs> That's right, I do. Might <laughs> also pick up on some of the emotion too. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think that that's something important. And I even think about like people I know who are very air heavy. Like I have, I know people in my life, I have someone who's a, a Aquarius sun with a Gemini moon and a Libra rising. Wow. And sometimes there's a tendency for them to actually not have their own thoughts, kind of mirror what other people are thinking and doing and saying Mm and kind of riding the waves of culture of whatever is acceptable at the time. This is a family member. So (laughs) So you know them very well. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think we're making some interesting conversation around this air element and there's something with the, I keep bringing it back to the Zodiac emojis because I'm, I'm learning a lot and I just posted it today. So I think it's fresh on my mind, but there's emojis that are connected to the water too, which we often think of with Aquarius as the water bearer, but there's actually more water coming through in the Libra emoji emojis than the Aquarius ones. So there's the sunset emoji, which has the body of water and then the sun setting, which Libra rules over the sunset, day and night, and balance. The lotus, like coming out of the mud and then floating on the water, being the symbol of enlightenment and consciousness and also beauty. And then the swan got a lot of um, nominations too, which it can fly. And it can not go under the water, but float on the water. So what is this with Libra? When I look at the glyph, it looks like the sunset. It's like the bottom line looks like maybe the water. Like what we could fill water in into this yeah. glyph. Yeah. So there's also something about emotional receptivity, but the ability to maybe like float above it and rise yeah. above it. Yeah. That's what is this absolutely like for you as, a, as a Libra sun? And your Aries moon wants to come in hot in a minute. So we're definitely gonna check with that Aries moon, but we're we're connecting to Libra first. Yeah. No, I love this. I um, I read Stephen Forrest's book, The Inner Sky, a long time ago. And I, when I got to Libra, I think I understood myself better than I had before because Libra has a lot of stereotypes around it, you know, being 
vain or beautiful or, or wanting things to be beautiful or, you know, love, fickleness, you know, all sorts of things. But what I think is kind of at the root of all this, what you're talking about, you know, it's saying like the lotus flower, the sunset, you know, what Stephen Forrest said was Libra seeks to calm you down. And so everything that you see, you know, because Taurus and Libra, like you said, are both linked to Venus and Venus is earth and nature where Taurus maybe grows nature, Libra appreciates nature. And that sunset that you see, maybe you've had the worst day and you're anxious about everything and you don't have enough money for rent and you don't know what you want to do with your life and you see a beautiful sunset, right? Yeah. You see a beautiful sunset and you sit on a park bench and you just watch it and you let all of your mind go. It's a meditation and you just allow yourself to be in the moment with this beautiful thing. And that's grace to me. You know, it's giving your, yourself a moment of grace. It's giving your uh, mind some grace. And, you know, a lot of us need external grace where something like an angel comes in and, angelically angelically assists you mm-hmm. but you can give that to yourself as well by accessing libra and using beauty of all kinds you know i think we're also very obsessed with physical beauty and we yeah tend to like not see all of the other beauty even the beauty that we make you know we can walk through the most beautiful part of your town and you'll see architecture that just leaves you breathless or um go down to the pond and look at all the, uh, you know, the lily pads and the lotus and, and, or go to the museum and see all the beautiful sculptures. And there's so much that we create. Um, Yeah, exactly. So that's why I think everybody's putting in kind of more of these watery aspects too, is because water reflecting on light reflect, you know, uh, being moved by the, the, the ripples in the air, you know, moving the water. It's like, it all kind of contributes to this harmonization of nature that calms you down. I'm thinking now another one of the symbols is the two swords crossed, which Mm -hmm. the two swords in the tarot is usually a figure sitting blindfolded in front of a really calm body of water. So there again, it's the air element, but there's something about the, the water being calm. We're not talking about like fierce waves here. It's the, that gentle rippling and reflecting of light. And the mirror is another one of the symbols in the Zodiac emoji too. And you're talking about the reflection of the water. Um, And then I'm also thinking about the two champagne glasses are cheersing, which is like the two of cups. So it's like more like cups, water energy. And I'm like, oh, which two of cups or two of swords? Which one's more Libra? And I don't know, but we can maybe talk about both of them. Uh And we're here in Libra season. So these themes might be coming up for us or maybe if you are finding yourself disconnected from the invitations of this time of year maybe sitting by the water at a bench at sunset could be something to just help you realign with the invitations of this archetypal energy yeah I was kind of thinking during Virgo season I saw a few people I know getting sick around me and I think some of that (laughs) might have been because they weren't leaning into the invitations of Virgo. Yeah. I was starting to think of it less as like, you know, this is what this time of year means and more as like an invitation for embodiment that if you embody Virgo, then things will feel really good during Virgo season. But if you're still trying to make it Leo season during Virgo season, you might get sick. (laughs) So maybe this time of year is an invitation for us to embody Libra more as opposed to, you know, if you are like a Virgo and you're still trying to do Virgo things during Libra season, maybe your relationships will start to be a little imbalanced or whatever Libra theme might come up for you. So that's something that kind of clicked into place for me in my own practice of just saying, oh, these are invitations for embodiment, which I've kind of known before, but I'm just kind of relearning yeah. at this point. They um, are. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And with Libra, um, like you were saying, just the also the power imbalances, the relationship issues, things like that, that is also a harmonizing factor. It's the same thing. So if you do find yourself in, in, you know, disagreements, maybe both of you can go and sit somewhere and enjoy something beautiful, or maybe because sometimes those relationships like Libra's air signs need to be taken out of their emotions and put into something where you both can just enjoy something rather than be so directly uh, communicative to each other. It's like, you're both enjoying something together. What a beautiful archetype Libra is. I always kind of forget, 
until it's Libra season again. And I'm re-reminded. I don't have, I have Libra in my chart. I have the South Node of Fate in Libra, which is important. And I'm a third deck in Aquarius, which is the Libra yeah. deck. And I was born on Valentine's Day. So I do like feel like oh. I like have a little bit of Libra to my Aquarius. But we're here today in honor of the Aries full moon. What what are you sensing for this particular lunation? Do you want to look at the chart together? Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna pull up the the screen here and I'll pull up the Aries full moon chart. And I see the sun is at six degrees exactly in zero minutes, which is kind of cool. I don't see That's that very, very often, cool, but it's yeah. exactly six degrees Libra sun and exactly six degrees Aries moon is this particular lunation. I'm just going to say a few other things that I see that feel particular to this chart and then we'll check in about it. But we have a lot in Libra if we consider Pallas Athene, the asteroid is just mm-hmm. a degree from the sun in Libra. The ruling planet of the moon, Mars, is in Libra at 21 degrees, hanging out with the south node of fate in Libra. And then across the wheel, we have the moon in Aries, Chiron in Aries, and then Eris and the north node of fate at the same exact degree, almost the same minute. That's crazy. That's very very cool. Yeah. So, and then, of course, another one that looks important to this chart, because it is also aspecting the nodes of fate, is Venus Juno and Black Moon Lilith and Leo, Venus and Juno both at 22 degrees of Leo. Yeah, so a lot of fire and air present. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And when oppositions. At, yeah. No, yeah. So much. When you look at a full moon chart or something like that, is that a part of your practice? What do you look at? What are you sensing from this Aries full moon? So, well, it's so funny. I've been so focused on my solar return that I'm glad I'm seeing this right now since my solar return is the next day. Um, Thank you very much. So I just see a lot of, well, first of all, the asteroids are pretty cool happening right now, being in opposition to each other, Chiron, Eris, and Pallas. Pallas is in her, I mean, I think dignity maybe because Athena is is attributed to Libra. So that's pretty precious. Um, With conjunct to the sun so this is and then with you know mars and its detriment there in libra i think is very interesting opposing chiron i think this is a lot of integration i mean that's what a lot of the full moon i feel is is you know the culmination of an understanding and then sort of bringing it out into the world or projecting it out in the world maybe um that's how i see it is like once it gets to that peak it's like okay i've i've thought this over enough or processed this enough or worked on this enough. And now I can let it come up to the surface and expel it in a way or evoke it. So this could be possibly with people's distant anger, especially with Chiron and Aries. And it could have to do with relationships, with how they deal with their past traumas. Uh, A lot of people have triggering experiences, especially when in relationships and with the sun and palace there is like justice, you know, standing up for who you are and saying, you know, logically and uh, unreactionary, this is where I am in my life or this is where I stand in my life. And I think that'll help a lot of people, uh, especially the Chiron Gemini people, since this is a sextile to it. So it's a helpful energy to it, which is a lot of us, you know. Um, so I, I just think that this is going to be maybe confrontational energy in a way. I mean, with especially with uh, Mars and Libra, it may not be as explosive as if Mars was in Aries, but it is maybe, maybe a come to kind for some people <laughs> or or a uh, venus and leo is also like the sextile to it is kind of calming it down i think a little bit or making it a little bit more about what you want in in terms of your life and passion and purpose than ra- maybe just uh rather than just like a, a relationship and what you need from that person it's like what do i want overall or what am i moving towards in essence yeah and venus has been in leo for quite some time yeah cause- Venus and Leo retrograde this summer. And I believe just after this full moon is when Venus begins to clear her shadow, which is interesting too. I think she made it up to 28 degrees of Leo, but we're getting... Yeah, she did. It's yeah. almost like a culminating point to have the full moon in a fire sign while Venus has been in a fire sign for four months while in the season yeah. that's ruled by Venus. So yeah. whatever has been taking place around Venus and Leo for you or just the Venusian themes, this might be 
illumination of that whole journey that you've been on for the last four months. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then yeah. Venus will enter Virgo um, during Libra season. So that could be something for us to just kind of be aware of. Venus enters Virgo on October 8th. And then we have the Libra Venus new Virgo. moon. On, what's that? Venus Virgo. I'm a Venus Virgo. Okay. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, Virgo. my Venus return. I love Venus and Virgo. Maybe it's because I'm a Virgo moon. But, you know, people talk shit on Venus and Virgo. You used the word earlier, detriment, which I think is, you know, it's a traditional word that yeah. I think is important vocabulary to have. And sometimes detriment placements, I find, and this is probably my Aquarian side, I like I, yeah, I agree. I mean, I had to work for my Venus and Virgo. And now that it's here, I'm like, I am keeping my Venus and Virgo. Like it's, it's something that maybe it's not as comfortable as if it was in Libra or Taurus, but comfort doesn't mean that you're doing anything better. You know, then you just might be more comfortable with some bad habits. <laughs> like, or maybe you're, you know, like who knows? <laughs> yeah. We have this Libra new moon that follows Aries full moon, of course, but that's an eclipse. That's a solar eclipse. And so mm. I think that's something important for us to just name during this full moon is that even though the North node is in Aries, which typically when a full moon is in the same side as the North node, it will mean an eclipse. However, yeah. since they're so far from each other degree wise, the north node's at 24 degrees of Aries and the moon's at six degrees, it's actually not a eclipse. We get a Taurus full moon partial eclipse on the other side of it. And that mm, closes yeah. out the Taurus Scorpio axis of those nodal. So you had your nodal return. I did. Year. So that Taurus full moon will close out that nodal return for you, the storyline. Yeah. But Either way, even though it's not an eclipse, energetically, this Aries full moon still just has that feeling because the North Node of Fate is in Aries with Eris and Chiron. Yeah. So how do you work with eclipse season energy? Do you work with eclipse season energy? And what? what I have tried. Do? I have wanted to go up against the cursed, <laughs> <laughs> the, the cursed, uh, you know, representation of the eclipses being really bad and i've been like no they they they're mystical they're magical and pretty much everything i've tried to do <laughs> on an eclipse is just tanked <laughs> so i acknowledge it and i try not to set up anything around it and i say thank you for uh, you know, being just a magical experience in the sky but i will not be attaching <laughs> any of my uh, experiments or projects or anything around an eclipse again it has definitely not been my friend in the past do you work with eclipses i you know i an elder that i know that's an astrologer and also just like ancient astrologers or more traditional astrologers say that it's not a great time to be doing any kind of forms of magic and a medical astrologer i know also says that when there is an eclipse, you stay indoors. Oh, like, oh thank God. Great. It's not <laughs> recommended, like even from a medical perspective. If you think of like even the sun just blacking out, it shocks the body and the nervous system. So it, oh, yeah. the ancients spent time indoors with the curtains closed, meditating during eclipses versus Absolutely. going out and putting on goggles and looking at it. Well, they would take their king and they'd hide them. They'd hide the king and they'd replace the throne with a fake king. It could be a person. It could be a prop because mm -hmm. it was so ominous. And they were so clear about it that they had the math down. I think 500 BC is when they could predict the next eclipse. Like that's insane math. Like that's how big of a deal it was to them to not look at any kind of eclipses. They're ominous signs. I just want to shout out your podcast. That's incredible. Thank um, you. <laughs> Could you tell us a little bit about your podcast? And then we're going to talk about, I want to talk about the name Aquarian too, because you're not an Aquarius. We talked about this. You had me on your podcast maybe a few months ago. And we talked about how you you have the part of fortune or the point of fortune in Aquarius, which is the meeting yes. point of the sun and rising. Have you kind of like thought about that at all since then? Or yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it's just, well, you really opened me up with the Libra Uranus um, mind blowing. What was it? Was the um, esoteric uh, planets, right? Or the esoteric ruler? So each ruler. sign that has blew my mind. 
Libra's esoteric ruling planet is Uranus. Yeah, that one, that blew my mind. That was really telling with actually what you just brought up about how I connect with people psychically, because Mm -hmm. it is a leap. I take leaps. It's not, I go into trance states. I, um, it's, and I have a lot of fire in me too. Like I said, water is the least element, but I have fire and I have air and I have some earth and it's the fire and the air that allow me to go down into a theta wave. And I can see, I can use that imagery to convey a lot more information than say, if I stopped, you know, developing and just used, um, sort of more topical empathy. And that one is harder for me, not because I don't have empathy for people, but probably because I, my empathy is just constant. And so I don't really, you know, like what are it's, I, I empathize a lot with needs too. So it's like, if you need something, I want to give it to you. So it's easier for me to go into a trance and like just actually perform psychic rather than connecting to all of your emotions because there's a lot going on. <laughs> you have a podcast. I want to, could yes. you tell us? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, so I have a podcast. It's called The Aquarian, um, spelled with an E instead of an I. And the first season was about tarot. And I'm going to, I stopped it for a little bit just because I have to recalibrate. Like podcasts are so time consuming. And I just spent so much time like really coming up with a lot of material that now I want to finish a lot of projects. And so I need to back off, but well, it's really structured. Yeah. It's like you have an episode for like a certain card or something. So oh yeah, the way that you're doing it and I'm just kind of looking in your chart right now and I see you have Venus and Mars conjunct in Virgo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then Neptune and mm-hmm. Capricorn too. Um, there's, a structure to it. So it's this archive essentially with free workshops that people can access. Mm -hmm. My podcast is kind of like that, but it's more of like, this is the Aries full moon episode for 2023. So this is kind of a one and done thing. And people can go back and listen to it and glean a lot of information from it too, because we're not talking too much about the current transits right now. We actually are just talking about astrology but yours is actually like something that could be archived um, yeah and it is it I needed to back off of that because of how much it required of me and I'm I miss reading people so much that I actually might start moving it once I start like I have to get these projects done there's just too much on my shoulders but I really want to start doing live readings because that I feel is yeah like I want to um, be able to offer that not only for people to listen to, but also for people to partake in. And especially when it comes to reading for people's past loved ones, that's a Mm -hmm. very big deal to me because I think that's just, you know, that's a, a gift anybody could really, uh, take to heart and really get a lot from if they needed it, you know, um, because we lose people and it's really painful and it's really wonderful to feel that that person is still with you or that person, you know, has a message for you or, or, you know, just wants to see you and wants to be a part of your life in this moment. But yeah. So if you are interested in tarot, there's plenty, like I did, I think 50 episodes or something, um, all on at least 45, um, all on tarot. And I just am coming out with a tarot book. I told you about, um, for my birthday, it's actually coming out on the full moon. So Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> it's very basic. It's how to read tarot cards for beginners or t- how to read tarot for beginners. Good. And it's my, it's my way of learning tarot. It's very different than I think I've ever read anybody approach tarot. And mm. it's what I've had to do because tarot was even for a psychic too confusing for yeah. way too long. And it's something where I'm like, I, I would like everybody, if you want to be a tarot reader, if you want to get good at it, you, everybody can get up to the same level and then we can go past there but I feel like there's so many people who are just stuck on things that could be really easily overcome if it was yeah. explained better. <laughs> well, maybe you could offer us like a little tip or something in tandem with two of the cards that I might put out on my yeah. altar in this particular lunation. So yes. I have the Justice card out for Libra. Beautiful. And Emperor card out for Aries. So I I like to just consciously pull out cards as a visual for the transits instead of like tuning in and doing a divinatory tool, which I also do with tarot, but I like to, to connect to the cards in tandem with astrological transits. So that's what I have out. So if I had them on my altar, I would invoke the energy of both, right? 
And the energy of justice, you can see it on like a legal level if you want. That's a very broad and, you know, not often visited archetype. Ooh, that's such a great image. What a great card. What deck is this? It's from the Fifth Spirit Tarot, which is a deck for a world beyond binary. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love this. Yeah, well, this is... um, So for our everyday Libra season, I would say one thing that you would want to focus on is fairness. And the reason that is, is because a lot of times Libra will have a tendency to people please, and they will want very much to make something agreeable and just sort of calm everything down. And if you've been having those experiences where you've been, you know, putting your own needs to the side or saying it's not a big deal and diminishing your honesty or the things that you're really feeling, this may be the season or this may be the uh, card for your altar to get you to start speaking honestly about Mm -hmm. what it is that you're feeling or what it is you need or how you see things in general. There's a lot of times people will bulldoze you. That's very much the emperor will bulldoze you if you don't have that internal power, which is probably also the power of water under the calm surface. So it's that depth of knowing that I'm going to be okay if I say the truth. And if our relationship is real, we'll be okay if I say the truth. And the emperor, yeah. So the emperor, it would definitely... So something that I discovered when I was doing the podcast about the uh, the emperor was looking back into Greek mythology and how you know each group of gods were overthrown by one of their sons, right? And I looked at that as the emperor. It's the right to your own authority. It's your right to your own autonomy and it's your right to be who you are. And so that's that full moon aspect is how much do I, with justice, um, uh, understand other people's positions and take all thoughts into consideration? And how much do I say I know and can take on myself and also have the right to manage and control myself. So I think that's the balance that people sometimes need to strike is, you know, what's that, that saying, um, pick your battles. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And this season may be the one where you're like, this may be the season of battles because I need to make sure that I feel comfortable as who I am, which is the emperor in all of my uh, aggression and and my need to be my own self, regardless Mm -hmm. of what you think and feel. And then also as a Libra, or justice, which is I do take into consideration what you're thinking, but I'd also like to communicate to you what I'm thinking so that we can maybe harmonize this or we can understand where we both stand with this. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if that's too logical. <laughs> like that's so air sign. <laughs> oh, I'm right there with you. And just taking in your brilliance, you have so much to share and to offer and your own unique perspective with working with these archetypes. Thank you. I've spent so long with them. (laughs) So, 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 so long. (laughs) There's a thing I like to do on the podcast. I don't do it every episode, but it's called Cosmic Slip and Slide. And it's where we put 60 seconds on the clock and I ask you as many questions as we can get through in 60 seconds. There's no right or wrong answer. These are like personal questions related to your sun and your moon sign is what I did for these So do you feel up to the cosmic slip and slide challenge? Yes, absolutely. My moon trine Uranus is so ready for this speedy. (laughs) Oh, good. Your moon trine Uranus and then your sun trine Jupiter. You got these trines going on. Okay, I'm going to put 60 seconds on the clock. Okay. And we'll start now. What color do you associate with Aries? Red. What zodiac sign is your Aries moon most attracted to? Leo's probably. If your Libra Aries made a sound, what would it be? A snarl. What famous person comes to mind when you think of Aries and Libra? Two, Cardi B and um, what's uh, AOC. <laughs> when is your Libra sun happiest? Calm. Huh? Silence. Silence. Uh, what makes my Libra sun happiest? Calm and silence. What What meal would your Aries moon most like to eat? A steak. Aries moon, was late. Mignon. <laughs> Aries moon was late to the party because she was too busy smoking weed <laughs> how, how can we love Aries moon more leave her alone <laughs> I, I'm honestly leave her in in terms of um who she is as a person she's just who she is like let her be <laughs> let her be Cardi B that's right let her be <laughs>
So we're at time. I do have one more. And this one, I think, was one you can marinate on a little bit more. But three adjectives to describe the Aries-Libra polarity. Underdog. Anger issues. Those two words. <laughs> Love for humanity. For everybody. So I want to kind of debrief on some of these interested in some of your answers what zodiac sign is your aries most attracted to you said leo yeah and i never date leos <laughs> it's so funny I, I never date leos but there's something about a leo that will and my dad's a leo maybe that's the other reason it's like there's somebody that'll cut up with me somebody that's really funny like me or, or uh, maybe also aries as well but i feel like leos just let go and have a good time and that's my leo rising too so i'm probably you know leaning towards it because of that but Aries are hella funny. <laughs> like Aries are hella funny. And they don't always want to be in a cerebral state. They don't want to be in an emotional state. They don't want to be plodding along. They just want to laugh and joke and have a good time. And so I'll, I'll, I have, um, anytime I meet like a Leo friend, we always have such a great time together, you know? So that's why I would say attracted to, maybe you meant romantically attracted to, but that's also like maybe my Aquarian descendants, like friends. Yeah, or your Libra being like right. romance. I just said most attracted to. Yeah. So if your Libra Aries made a sound, you said a snarl. So I think that, and maybe this is also leaning towards my Black Panther spirit animal. Mm -hmm. There's so much power. I do see this like very powerful beast inside of a Libra Aries, especially in Aries. Mm -hmm. And the Libra will keep it calm. So you won't really see the power underneath, or maybe you don't really, it doesn't show itself, you know, easily. But if you were to be in its presence, you would hear something and it would probably be a snarl. It wouldn't be an out and out roar yeah. and it wouldn't be nothing. It would just be That's just hot. a snarl. That's hot. I love that. What famous person comes to mind when you think of Aries and Libra? You said Cardi B, who's a Libra sun with an Aries moon, and AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, yes. congresswoman, youngest congresswoman in her history, yes. Libra sun, Aries moon. So they, they're the same combo as you. These are two very different. Mm -hmm. And energetically, maybe we can feel the the resonance, but you share in this with them as well. And I know there's people listening who are also Libra, Aries, Moon. Maybe share with us what, why those two figures came to mind. Unapologetic, both of them. Yeah. They are very, in their own ways. Mm -hmm. um, when you have an Aries, Moon, you have something you believe in. And AOC believes in her platform. And Cardi B believes in her platform, but she believes in rap. She believes in artistry. She believes in... So they're able to communicate so well to everybody and without any fear because they feel in alignment with what they believe in. So the voice can be let out, both of them, you know? So yeah, they definitely are different people, but they are unapologetic, both of them. <laughs> they're both funny too, actually. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Aries and being funny. And Libra's also very charismatic, but... Yeah, there's the humor. You add them together. <laughs> you got to add them together sometimes. <laughs> and I can feel from both of them a snarl, actually. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. When is your Libra son happiest? When it's quiet. Yeah. 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 It's actually a weird, I don't know if other Libras will agree or if it's a Libra Aries thing, because yeah. Aries are isolated or they're much more independent. They like being alone. Um, I am a communicator. That is where I find satisfaction. It's not where I find energy. Yeah. So when I'm really just a, like, you know, at peace and, you know, everybody's gone and I'm watching my gossip on YouTube or whatever, you know, do my other little, like little Libra things, like do my facials, doing things like that. Nobody talking to me. I'm not, you know, and I just get to be with my own, you know, body and myself and my mind. And I'm not thinking about anything. I'm not being asked anything. I'm not worrying about anybody or I'm not, you know, that is just primo time. <laughs> I'm coming back to that image of like the sunset with the water being calm. Like there's, there's yes. a calm and a quiet that maybe Libra's happy in. Oh, yes. I mean, well, you know, and also might be, like you said, Deccans, right? I'm a want a first decan Libra. So I'm a double Libra. Now I've noticed October Libras are a bit different. 
than September Libras. And that might be because Gemini and Aquarius are the next decans. Um, like my brother was born on September 23rd and me and my twin sister are September 30th. So we're, we're all twin? in September. Yeah. <laughs> so we're finding more things out. Yes. I'm a twin. Yeah. <laughs> well, now you get a little bit of the Gemini Decan in there. Just being yeah. a twin. Well, Even it's crazy. Though. You see my uh, chart, my Venus is in the first house. My sister was born seven minutes before me and her Venus is in the second house. So mm. it's, we are very, it's very interesting. We do have like pretty big differences there. But Hello? she's much more extroverted than both of us, but she doesn't necessarily go out into the world to socialize. She's just very like internalized with like all of her friends. Like that's who she spends her time with, you know? So I've noticed October Libras, maybe because they're second and third decans, it's easier, maybe not for all of them, but for many of them to go out into the world and make new friends. And for me, I'm get a little bit more like, no, no, <laughs> I'm yeah. going to go back in. <laughs> you were born in Kentucky? Mm-hmm. Louisville. I I did not know that until, I mean, obviously I put it in my software, but I'm just know it because you're in New York, right? Yeah, I'm in Brooklyn. Yeah. When did you move to Brooklyn? When I was 19. Well, mm -hmm. um, no, I moved to New York when I was 19 and I moved to Brooklyn maybe six years ago. Okay. So when I was about 30. So I've lived here, I've lived in New York longer than I lived in Louisville. Gotcha. Yeah. So Louisville is great. I mean, there's so many weird there's just my whole, I think this is also the Aquarius experience in me and maybe why I called it the Aquarian, uh, because for me, the Aquarian, the podcast and what I'm starting or the, you know, my brand name, I guess, is for the Aquarian era. It's not for an Aquarian, no. um, just simply because that's the only thing I could think of that resonated with me without limiting me. No. <laughs> so, and that might be also because of the Aquarian descendant that I have, Jupiter and Aquarius. Like I do not like getting boxed in. And most of my life, um, you know, from a childhood was all twisted up. You know, the people that, you know, were stereotypically one thing were not, uh, that was not assigned to the right person. So everybody was different in the way the general public would assume them to be. And then on top of that, um, you know, I'm half black and half white and I come from the South and just little things like my dad being born in a segregated hospital and like just stuff that like I would never personally experience. Like I just know about on the periphery of my life. So it's hard for me to imagine myself as one thing. And it's interesting that like New York is the place that I live because it's much more, I mean, it's not at, it, Louisville's diversified, but it's still the South. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> And it's interesting, too, for you to be biracial as a Libra, too, because there's just like you're attuned mm -hmm. to understanding polarity. So I would imagine that someone who's biracial that's a Libra is just maybe more consciously aware of that than if someone's biracial and is a Virgo. I don't know if that's completely huh. true, but I've just that's noticed like... I come to Bell Hooks a lot for Libra. Oh, I love Bell Hooks. That's so much a part of her work is the intersectionality of race and gender and class when it comes to relationship and love. I believe she was one of the first Black children to go to public school, or to an uh, integrated public school. Wow. Uh, and I think about how that informs so much of her work and also, because she's from the South too, also... <laughs> not how much it informed her work, but just like as a Libra, it's part of her sole purpose is to mm -hmm. create dialogue around any forms of duality or polarity. Um, so you're a twin. Yeah. And, and my you, brother's a Libra too. So it's three Libras. <laughs> That's so funny. Three biracial Libras. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's so true too, because when you think about Libra, you know, and you think about calm, Calm comes after anger and war. Peace comes after war. Like you wouldn't know one without the other. You'd just have, you know, uniformity probably. So you put a Libra, meaning, you know, we're just looking at this like symbolically. Nobody's picking out Libras to put into this, you know, an integrated school. But if you think about a Libra going into an integrated school, it's like it's it's the peace that's coming after this war that's that's still going, but it's we're putting someone here in order to harmonize the situation so that eventually it is harmonized. Yeah. So it is the person on the front line. And I think a lot of Libras would, I mean, most people would attest to their parents being pretty aggressive towards each other. But I think Libras were very sensitive to the aggression uh, between their parents 
uh, because right. they were either told to tell, you know, the other person this or, you know, mediate back and forth or they go to empathize with one or they try to understand what's going on. Whereas maybe, you know, other sun Aries. signs would be, yeah, and Aries would just be like, fuck you guys and like just leave. But I'm Libra's like, here. what's going on? <laughs> exactly, right? So being both of those people, you can see it's like, you know, being a Libra sun and an Aries moon, it's like my family naturally was a angry and aggressive, but they were also very clear that they are who they are. And the Libra in me being the son has to reconcile all that being a new person in this family or a new person in this uh, group of people. Yeah. And so you might, you might feel into those Libra themes when it comes to being biracial. What about gender for you? What is your relationship to gender as a Libra? So astrologically speaking, this is, this is what's been very interesting for me with gender is Libra Aries Venus and Mars conjunct Mm -hmm. and having, yeah. And having, um, Taurus and uh, in the North node and Scorpio for the South node, which go both go back to Venus and Mars. Right. So everything is just like wrapped up. Yeah. So I definitely in my formative years, very much leaned into Libra wanting to feel pretty, wanting to feel feminine, wanting to feel, you know, like um, a receptive person. Mm -hmm. But with the conjunction of Mars and Venus, I was also very sexual and very aggressive at the same time and with Aries moon and Leo rising. So they had to kind of find a balance, which they did not until much later because, you know, you're a teenager and you're in your 20s. Now I'm actually trying to find not necessarily my gender, but how I want to express myself because I guess maybe, you know, feeling androgynous in that way is like femininity doesn't necessarily have to be woman. You know, that, that can be, you know, any, anything that's being projected as beautiful or receptive or, or calming or loving that's femininity and masculinity is, you know, I'm going after it or I'm going to be direct or maybe I'm a bit more structured or whatever. And that doesn't necessarily have to be your gender in order for you to project that. So I'm trying to find like the middle ground with that because I love, um, you know, leaning into my more structured and, you know, um, pressed side. And I love like nails and, you know, I just all sorts of femininity, but like also finding that masculinity to, streamlined I don't know I just like putting them together (laughs) if someone wanted to work with you how might they find you and also they can still listen to your podcast it's still out there yeah oh yes you can absolutely still listen to my podcast and I think I'm going to go on every full moon basically and just um I think I'm going to open the floor up to people to ask me any questions about Mm -hmm. anything you know maybe I know it offhand or maybe I can look it up because I'm interested in everything so it's easy as a Libra you just ask me and I can go you know I can figure it out Mm -hmm. um but you can also go to my website www.theaquarian.com it's spelled the same way um and that's where you can sign up for any tarot reading or natal chart reading you'll also find my tarot book that's coming out and we didn't get to talk about it but I have um a deck coming out for cardamancy yeah. And I have to tell you about that at a different time. But Cardamancy is the original fortune telling deck. Yeah. So we'll save that for next time because we yes. sure will continue to be in conversation and dialogue <laughs> with each other. I'm such a fan of you, and your work, and just love getting to spend time with you to talk all things mystical. So yeah. thank you for being with us today on the podcast. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you so much for having me. It's been so much fun. And I'm just really happy that we've gotten to know each other. Even even our distance can't keep it apart, can't keep our souls apart. <laughs> you know, it's true. And that's like a thing, like why I'm still on the social medias, you know, like yeah. it's one of the reasons. Like both of us have kind of struggled with that a little bit, I think. Oh, just, yeah. Like, yeah. Am I on social media? <laughs> Do I take myself off? But like, there's a lot of people that I love and like to stay connected to through social media. And I try to stay focused on that. And so I think I want to share a quote that's coming to me right now that a Libra yoga teacher taught me. The verb is very Libra to me, which we often will talk about Libra as being indec- indecisive, but I choose is actually a phrase I use for Libra a lot. It's like actually making a conscious choice. But the the quote is, I choose to focus on what connects us, not on what separates us. Oh, yeah. That's very Libra. (laughs) That's very (laughs) Libra. Absolutely. The harmony. Very helpful in my life to have that quote. 
And I also just want to say, in light of the Aries full moon, it's also gotten me in trouble too. (laughs) Because it's like, you know, choosing to focus on what connects you to someone versus what separates you can also get you like entangled in some karmic things too. An enmeshment there. (laughs) Use discernment, use the Aries full moon to like step into your power too. That's right. But yeah. You're on Instagram. I'll link up your Instagram, your website, all the things in the show notes. Thank you for carving out the space in your life to be with us today. Any final words before we close out? No, just happy full moon, everybody. I hope that you all feel incredibly empowered. And happy cosmic self day to you. And then followed by your birthday. Yes. Thank you as always, Cosmic Cousins, for tuning into the podcast. Without you, the show would not be possible. And it's an honor to be here with you in this way. Cosmic Cousins is an offering that is from my heart to yours. And the name Cosmic Cousins, it comes from a desire to cultivate a sense of belonging and connection with those of us in the astrology, tarot, spirituality community. And so please follow me on Instagram or social media if you're there. It's a great way for us to stay in touch. And I look forward to connecting with you more in the future. So wishing you a happy Libra season and a happy Aries full moon. I'll see you in two weeks. For the Libra New Moon. And if you're on Instagram, you could help us decide what the official Libra emoji is gonna be. Alright, cousins, take sweet care and remember deep breaths. <laughs>